Opinion alert. It's honestly provocative talk on the Lars Larson Show. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Glad to get your phone calls and your emails at 866-HEY-LARS. That's 866-439-5277. Emails go to talk at LarsLarson.com. And Tim Schmidt joins me now, the president and founder of the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. Tim, it's good to have you back on the program. Hello, Lars. It's uh, always an honor to be here. So great, great, to, great to talk with you. Now I got to tell you something. I'm a little concerned tonight because Neil Gorsuch, who I think on paper looks like a great Supreme Court pick by Donald Trump, apparently the uh, reporters and a few others got to him, and including some Democrats like Richard Blumenthal, who is a fraud as far as I'm concerned, but that's just my opinion. Okay. Uh, got to Gorsuch and said, "Well, what do you think about uh, the president making comments about the judge in Seattle uh, ruling on the?" Uh, on the, uh, the travel uh, issue, the immigration issue. And uh, they, apparently Gorsuch said that he was disheartened and demoralized by this. Other than that, I, I'm a fan of the Gorsuch pick, but I want to know where you think he stands with regard to the Second Amendment. You, you, you know, Lars, I, I think that as a, as a whole, gun owners are, are breathing a huge sigh of relief. I mean, we've literally been battling for the last, what, eight years and, you know, I personally think when I first heard that Neil Gorsuch was the pick, I was relieved. Um, I mean, he's a strict originalist. And by that definition alone, he, he's going to su- support the Second Amendment. So I'll admit I'm a little disheartened as well by his comments uh, you know, regarding President Trump, Trump's comments. But let's not let's not give up on him yet. I think uh, I think he'll be a fantastic replacement to Scalia. And um, I, I believe that he will hold up that natural born right to self-defense. I guess the only thing uh, th- that really concerns me is I understand that at this point he's been picked for the job, he's been nominated, you know, the Democrats are making all kinds of threatening noises, but they don't have the votes. So I don't think there's any doubt he's going to be confirmed, or I don't think there's much mm-hmm. doubt he's going to be confirmed. But what always begins to frighten me about anybody in government or politics is when they appear to cave in. Now, you know, I don't expect him to, you know, kiss Donald Trump on the behind or, or say, oh, gosh, he's God's gift to everything. But, you know, the, I think the president had a right to criticize the judges. President Obama certainly criticized the Supreme Court. President Bush has criticized federal judges in their decisions. And I understand that when, you know, you give the president uh, the awesome responsibility of making sure the country's safe, uh, and then a judge says, no, nope, I'm going to shut that program down, even though you think it's absolutely essential— I would I would be unhappy with that too, and I, to some extent, well, to a great extent, I like President Trump's approach. Instead of getting the mealy mouth stuff that we usually get from politicians, well, mm. I'm very disappointed in the judge's ruling. You know, in other words, they they couldn't say butter if they had a mouthful, and and I like a president who says, ah, this so-called judge comes out, you know, because he talks like the rest of us talk. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, you're right, Lars. He really does, and and maybe that's what happened with Neil. Maybe Neil Neil was caught off guard in the sense that you know we're not used to hearing a president talk like a regular person and and really say the words that that regular people would say. And quite frankly, you know, you know Neil Neil Gorsuch being a judge himself, that may have hit a little too close to home. But but I got to tell you, if you look at his his past history, if you look at all the rulings, you know, he's. He's worked on uh, whether it's freedom of religion, administrative law, interstate commerce. I mean, the guy is an originalist, and he's going to hold up that Second Amendment. And that's ultimately for gun owners and for patriotic Americans you know, who believe in old-fashioned values. That's, that's what's important. Because but, what I'm see- yeah, go ahead. Uh, Oh, I just want to interrupt him because just two seconds ago, literally, I got the word in my ear. Sessions has been confirmed as the next attorney oh. general, which is more good news for people who are fans <laughs> of the Second Amendment, right? <laughs> Amen to that. That's fantastic news. That's that's great. D- despite all of Elizabeth Warren's whining and wanting to read letters from 30 years ago and, and everything else, it's like it was all just for the big kabuki dance that de- the Democrats have to do to show that well, they're really, really angry about the choices this president has made. Good. We know you're angry. Quiet down and sit and, down, Senator Warren. And, and, and Lars, thank goodness that all really all the Democrats have nowadays is the kabuki, kabuki dance. That's all they can do. That's it. I mean, they're, they're okay, we're going to dance for the next two years, and then we're going to lose some more congressional seats, and we'll dance even <laughs> faster on our way to 2020. Oh, I, I, I'm, they're, they're going to get some tired feet in the next four years, and, and in the four years after that as well. But, Tim, has Gorsuch ever had 
uh, a full on Second Amendment case before him, or even one where you came close enough on the second that the Second Amendment was somehow involved in a case? Yeah, uh, based on my research, he has not. I mean, especially nothing as as, as clear as some of the some of the SCOTUS cases we've seen in the near pat in the near you know recent history. Um, but again, if you, you mean like Heller and those, because those were great. Right, it, it, exactly right. You know, and the good news is that, you know, thanks to Scalia, we, we came on top of those. But but again, I really I feel confident that that based on his his you know, very you know, originalist uh, uh, interpretation of the Constitution, I, I feel confident he's going to he's going to be our guy. See, and as an as as an originalist, he should also believe in that. What is it called? Stare decisis, where once the court has ruled on something major, you don't go back and revisit that six months or a year from now. You you don't go back to it for a while. You know they they give some stability to the system. It's not a a written rule, but it's a philosophy that the court follows. That this says we're not going to decide. You know this on you know in 2017, and then go 180 degrees the other way in 2019. Yeah, exactly, exactly, Lars. So, say I got I got to say something real quick. Sure, it was, it was really neat neat to run into out at the shot show this year. I uh, we've never met face to face. No, we haven't. To, uh, to, to connect, yeah. You know, I'm glad to see your organization represented there. And just so people know, Shot Show is the shooting, hunting, outdoor trade show. Uh, we're talking 150 billion dollars of the U.S. economy mm-hmm. for with all what. Virtually every firearms maker, knife maker, scope maker, outdoor gear maker in the country represented at SHOT Show. It's it's a great thing to go to. It's only open to the industry, but they're nice enough to let me come there and, you know, shout into a microphone for two days or three days. So it's great to be there, but that's exactly where you needed to be. Where were you on the day that Trump uh, took the oath? You, you were at Chacho Show, and I was at Chacho, Show, but I was standing down on the floor, and everybody in that hall was watching screens as the president t- took the oath. I thought it was fantastic. No, no Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders fans in that crowd. <laughs> no, not, I don't think anyone was in the, the entire proper of Las Vegas that was a fan of uh, of uh, Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. Um, I was in executive meetings all day, but I did turn the TV on. I saw it. It was fantastic. And um, I'll tell you what, being out at the SHOT Show and running into you and seeing all of our members, it's, it's just amazing. It, you know, more and more Americans are they're truly understanding that responsible gun ownership is, is just that smart choice. And, and, and it's such an honor to be part of an organization like the USCCA. I mean, that's what we do. We make more responsible armed Americans. Absolutely. Hey, listen, in the last 20 seconds, where, how can people join your organization uh, to both protect themselves and to guard their rights? Yep. Easiest way is just go to uscca.com. That's uscca.com. Hey, Tim, it's a pleasure to have you on and keep up the good work you're doing. Thanks, Lars. Take care. Thank you very much. That's Tim Schmidt from the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. Hey, this time of year, you might be tempted